This week, Joe Rogan and Jon Stewart examine factory farming. Lewis Hamilton supports Black Lives Matter with a new Formula One car. And Vinnie Jones has a new mustache made out of oats. This is Live Kindly News. Remember to hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon to turn on notifications, and leave your comments below. Vinnie Jones is rocking an edgy new look. He sported an oat milk mustache as part of a new vegan milk ad. The footballer turned actor joined forces with boxer Nicola Adams, singer Pixie Lott, and a number of other celebrities to recreate a famous 2010 milk ad. The new campaign, launched by European plant-based food brand Allpro, promotes vegan oat milk. AllPro's ad spins off of the UK's Milk Marketing Forum's famous campaign. It was launched by the group of British milk cooperatives and dairy companies in an attempt to boost milk consumption among younger generations. Sandy Wilkie, former chair of the Milk Marketing Forum, said in a statement about the campaign, Milk has become less visible, particularly among a younger audience. A recent study by the Agriculture and Horticulture Development Board revealed people in the UK are drinking 50% less milk than they were in 1974. Lot's new spot features the message, Lots can change in 10 years. While Jones's ad empowers, you know it's good for you. Adams's message is powered by oat. Jones apparently likes his new look. He said, let's not beat around the bush. In 2020, we all know there's a new stash in town. I was a bit reluctant to have a good shave before the shoot and lose my rugged good looks, but I think the moat stash looks pretty damn good on me. I'm taking it back to Hollywood. Coming up. Joe Rogan and Jon Stewart examine factory farming. Pope Francis and the Vatican are encouraging Catholics to divest from fossil fuels, emphasizing a responsibility to protect human rights and the environment. The announcement was made in Lodato Si, a 225-page encyclical written by Pope Francis. Officials presented the new manual, Journeying for the Care of the Common Home, at a press conference in the Vatican. It highlights practical ways in which Catholics can achieve the broad goals first laid out in the 2015 encyclical. The Holy See Interdicastery Table on Integral Ecology drafted the manual. It suggests people favor positive changes by avoiding companies that do not satisfy certain parameters. Examples include child labor, environmental destruction, and human rights violations. It also suggests the shunning of companies that harm social or human ecology. Pope Francis wrote, We know that technology based on the use of highly polluting fossil fuels, especially coal, but also oil, and to a lesser degree, gas, needs to be progressively replaced without delay. On a recent episode of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, Rogan and former Daily Show host Jon Stewart discussed politics and factory farming. Do you have moral qualms about meat or do you not, like you said, well, you know, we're, we're hunters and, and that, like, is that ever an issue for you or is it purely a health issue or well, is it? There's both things. Um, there's a health issue. There is a moral qualm with factory farming. There's not a moral qualm, qualm right. with health, with hunting. Cause I, I know the reality of the life of a deer. You can either die quickly by the hand of a person and you will respect that life and it'll nurture your body and the bodies of your family. Our problem is a disconnection more than anything. Stewart went vegan about five years ago. He now cares for rescued animals with his wife, Tracy Stewart, on their New Jersey farm. And we ended up with a farm with pigs and goats and sheep and things like that. And it, it became untenable for me to make that decision. You know, that, that sort of that decision of, uh, I think you'll be better off if I kill you. And it, it became, it was something I could no longer manage once I knew the process of it. Although he maintained his stance on hunting, Rogan added that factory farmed animals are the worst version of what human beings are capable of. Well, well factory farmed animals is the worst version of what human beings are capable of. They were capable of ignoring suffering to the point where we lock them all in warehouses. KFC restaurants in Hong Kong just got a vegan makeover. The chain launched New Era Vegan Chicken with Alpha Foods and Gardein at select locations. KFC Hong Kong's new plant-based series is now available at 19 selected locations. The series includes New Era Nuggets and the New Era Burger, made using plant-based meat from Alpha Foods and Gardein. The Hong Kong launch of the New Era range was negotiated with David Young's Green Monday campaign. A small chain of restaurants and food stores in Hong Kong called Green Common support Hong Kong's version of Meatless Monday. Young is also the brain behind Omni Foods, which brought the first vegan pork to Asia. Consumers are ready for this change. 
In fact, they have been asking for it. Young said, when the legendary KFC colonel dons green, you know a new era is officially here. The milestone launch will without a doubt further ignite the plant-based movement in Asia and globally. KFC's parent company, Yum Brands, partnered with Beyond Meat to launch vegan meat across KFC, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut locations in China in May. Green Common was the first to bring the Beyond Burger to Asia in 2018. Starbucks Singapore has also introduced a plant-based option. The chain launched the Impossible Rendang Pie, made with Impossible Foods as vegan meat. While the pie itself is not vegan, it is vegetarian-friendly. Starbucks Impossible Rendang Pie is part of a limited-time Shiok food menu to celebrate the local and regional flavors of Singapore. According to Patrick Kwok, the general manager of Starbucks Singapore, the Rendang Pie is the first of an upcoming plant-based range. Starbucks CEO Kevin Johnson said that adding additional plant-based alternatives, in particular dairy-free milk, is a key part of the brand's sustainability goals. Johnson added that on the chain's 50th anniversary in 2021, it will formalize its 2030 goals based on what we have learned between now and then. Coming up, the International Space Station's antenna could help protect wild animals. Lewis Hamilton is getting a new ride. The six-time Formula One champion will race in an all-black car in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. I can't tell you how proud I am to see Mercedes standing with me and standing with the whole message of equality and, and inclusivity. And Hamilton, who drives for Mercedes, helped the company design the new car. The company said it gave up its signature Silver Arrows trim to help improve the diversity of its team and fight racism. Doing the car black, that's huge. You know, Mercedes have been a Silver Arrows for years. This is, this is not something you would ever expect from Mercedes, but they are about being with, the, you know, they can't change the past, they acknowledge the past, and um, but they want to be a part of helping shift the future for a better, better time. And it's great that Formula One have also done that. The British racer will drive the new car, dubbed the Black Arrow, throughout the duration of the 2020 Formula One season. His teammate, Valtteri Bottas, will also race in an all-black car. An antenna on the International Space Station is transmitting data that could help protect wild animals. The International Cooperation for Animal Research Using Space, a German-Russian observation system for animal migration, involves hundreds of tiny transmitters attached to animals, including elephants and bats. So it will help us bring movement from the local to the global scale. Once we put together all the information, then we have a completely different, a new understanding of life on the planet. The ISS antenna, installed by astronauts back in 2018, collates the data from the animals and it is beamed back down to scientists in Moscow. The system is currently in a test phase, but the data could be available for the use of researchers in the fall. Martin Wachowski, the Max Planck Institute for Ornithology's Director of Migration Research, told Inside Science, The sensors allow animals to be our eyes and ears and noses in the world, and we are linking it all together. The data will allow scientists to track animals changing migration patterns and work out new and improved conservation methods. In a major win for fur-bearing animals, Sephora has banned all fur eyelashes, including mink. It says it will produce synthetic and faux fur alternatives instead. The decision follows pressure from international animal rights group PETA and more than 280,000 emails from concerned customers. Sephora joins Tarte, Too Faced, and Urban Decay in ditching mink. Typically, mink fur comes from factory farms. The fur trade is notoriously cruel for fur-bearing animals. Workers shave off animals' fur before or directly after the animals are killed. These naturally solitary animals are also kept in cramped wire cages where they are unable to exhibit normal behaviors such as swimming and burrowing. According to animal rights charity Viva, animals raised on fur farms experience extreme anxiety. Many become so stressed they will self-mutilate. Several companies make truly cruelty-free false lashes, including Eyelure, Pure, House of Lashes, and Swede Lashes. Chrissy Teigen recently praised the latter in a recent Instagram story. Colorado has made strides for animal rights. The state just became the sixth in the nation to ban cage confinement for egg-laying hens. HB 201343, called egg-laying hen confinement standards, passed the state legislature last month and was signed into law by Governor Jared Polis. 
Republican Dylan Roberts and Senator Kerry Donovan sponsored the bill. The new law spares approximately 6 million chickens from being held in cages so small that they are deprived of the ability to stretch their wings. Hens must be kept cage-free with at least one square foot of usable floor space per animal. They must also have access to unfettered vertical space. Egg producers must also provide perches, nest boxes, scratching areas, and dust baths, which are crucial to hens' mental and physical health. Farmers who violate the law may face a civil penalty of up to $1,000 per violation. Michigan, Oregon, Washington, Massachusetts, and California have all passed similar cage-free laws in recent years. That's it for today. What do you think about Joe Rogan and Jon Stewart's factory farm conversation? Will you be trying Sephora's new vegan cruelty-free lashes? Let us know in the comments below. As always, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. We'll see you again next week for Live Kindly News.